Uh, good morning everybody, it is great to be here with you and can I just again acknowledge the diversity in the room. This is not the first time I've spoken to this conference but the room does get more diverse uh, each time I come and that's a really exciting uh, exciting thing to see so congratulations and well done and uh, isn't it nice to be able to meet like this face to face, something that we weren't able to do last year uh, but can I acknowledge all of the work that you did over the course of the last 18 months or so to continue to support our communities through the significant challenges posed by COVID-19. Uh, it's about this time last year we were starting to come out of that cycle of lockdowns and uncertainty and start to get life back to something that was a little bit more normal. Uh, the reality though is that for many around the world they haven't been quite so fortunate. So we have been in a really privileged position here in New Zealand and it means that we can do things like this and we've been able to do things like this for a lot longer uh, than many other places. I want to acknowledge Judge Andrew, Andrew Beecroft who spoke to you yesterday. Uh, he has been a very passionate advocate uh, for learners within our education system, learners of all ages, young learners in particular, and has been a regular uh, voice challenging the government to actually consult more with the communities whose decisions, uh, whose decision, whose our decisions affect. Uh, and so um, I'm sure he will have given you a lively contribution and some things to think about. COVID-19 disrupted our communities a lot, but it also highlighted the adaptability of our education system at all levels. The fact that people stayed engaged and kept learning uh, in an extraordinary time, I think is a testament to our education system. Disruption caused by COVID-19 sped up a lot of the things that were happening below the surface anyway, but it also brought to the fore some of the big challenges that we knew were coming and it really shone a light on them. So I think about digital inclusion, for example. That really accelerated through COVID-19. We saw people using technology in ways that they hadn't done before to stay connected when they couldn't be connected face to face and in person. So in terms of our education system, we saw more video conferencing, more Zoom lessons. So we saw teachers using Zoom as a, as a way of keeping in touch with their classes during the COVID-19 lockdown and that was really exciting but it also highlighted for us that not everybody is in that position. When we went into the COVID-19 lockdown we knew that we had at least 80,000 households with young people in them who weren't connected to the internet and so that and potentially hundreds of thousands of young people within those households who weren't going to be connected multiply that out and consider adult learners and those also needing to stay engaged and it highlights the magnitude of the digital connectivity and inclusion challenge that we face as a country. So we made some progress on those issues but we've still got a way to go and ACE can play a role in that. Uh, getting households connected and getting devices in front of people is only one of the parts of that equation. You also have to ensure that they know how to use them uh, and that's where ACE can really come to the fore. Add-on community education has played a vital role in uh, New Zealand's history uh, and I think it's a role that for a period of time leading up to a few years back was being unduly narrowed down. There wasn't a recognition uh, that when it comes to social isolation, economic disruption, social inclusion, ACE can play a bigger role rather than a smaller one. So before COVID-19 our government had committed to investing more in adult and community education and that uh, commitment you saw reflected in the significant funding that we put in last year and I'll talk more about that in a moment. But we also want to ensure that uh, we are recognising the full depth and breadth of what ACE has to offer. And so that means taking a more holistic view of outcomes. I think for a long time education funding has been narrowly focused on a narrow range of outcomes rather than looking at the broader outcomes that ACE in particular has to offer. So last year we put an extra 3.6 million dollars a year, that's, a, that's year on year, uh, into uh, adult and community education but we also expanded the range of what that can fund starting to move away from that very narrow definition of what is important. So that's funding about this year 1.2 million hours of ACE 
for, for, for about 49,000 learners. To give you a bit of a breakdown of that, and many of you in the room will be familiar with this, about 13,000 learners are focused on employability skills. We've got about 4,500 learners in courses to support digital inclusion, one of the big challenges I just mentioned, and about 3,600 learners in language courses other than New Zealand Sign Language or Te Reo Māori. And I think that's also really important. We know that language learning actually is important, something we should embrace and celebrate. Uh, and so uh, I think that is a, an area where uh, ACE has the ability to continue to expand. Having expanded already, and we will continue to look to expand, we also want to ensure that we break out of the cycle of you make two steps forward and then you find that progress gets eroded away over time. And so this year we've added ACE to the system of regular annual adjustments to make sure that your funding keeps up each year. So you don't go backwards while you wait for the next, the next big instalment. You get regular increments to keep your funding up, uh, up to its, uh, its real terms level and that's what we've been doing this year. We've put significant uh, investment in this year's budget into adult learning in some other areas, vocational education in particular. We know that we've got some big challenges around uh, re-employment uh, and retraining and reskilling as our workforce needs change. And so we're doing a big transformational program across vocational education. And there are interactions between that work and the adult and community education system. I see potential for significant growth in ACE as a stepping stone, as a pathway into vocational education. And sometimes though, that means not just focusing too narrowly on pathways, but focusing more on the learner. And so I've seen really uh, inspiring examples of where ACE has provided a hook into learning that's then allowed someone to go on to do learning in another area that may not have been where they started, but it was the, it was the opportunity that they got through ACE that actually got them engaged in learning got them out of the house for some of those people uh, and that's, a, that's particularly true when we're talking about people who feel isolated, people who are struggling with mental health issues, getting them out of the house and engaged in some form of learning, no matter how informal that might be at the beginning, actually provides a pathway that leads them on to other things and so ACE has a, a really significant role to play there and I uh, want to thank you for that. So we know we need to do more to support people who have been displaced from work and who need to re-engage. We know that we can do a better job of bridging the gap between formal education and schools, uh, and particularly for those who didn't thrive at school, and further educational opportunities. Uh, and we also have a challenge around uh, those who don't have time for formal qualifications but need to be able to continue to learn. And I uh, think back to um, so my apologies to those of you who have been here every time I've spoken because I think I've probably mentioned this every time I've spoken to you but I think back to my visits to the last of the night classes offered in my electorate before they ended and seeing some self-employed people in those night classes uh, doing informal courses and in things like IT because that's the way the world was working and whilst they were self-employed they needed to uh, upskill in order to stay self-employed uh, and ACE provided them an opportunity to do that uh, at a time that suited them without them having to engage in a formal qualification. So um, I, can I uh, also just commend you for that. I'm probably going to not speak for a lot longer um, because actually I do think that the question and answer session is often where we get the, uh, the most engaged discussion uh, with something that we're in, in a forum like this. But can I just acknowledge uh, everything that you've been through, uh, not just over the last 18 months as we've grappled with the challenges of COVID-19, but over the last decade or so, during a period where adult and community education has not been given the prominence or the value that it deserves. Uh, we're climbing back out of that, but we've still got a way to go. Uh, and so can I acknowledge that and thank you for your commitment and your passion for keeping hope alive uh, at a time when that was very challenging. Uh, and say that I think that the future is looking pretty exciting for this sector. Kia ora.